We're high court enforcement agents. We've got high court mayor. I'd like to sort this out face to face. Peace out. Twelve billion pounds is owed to people and businesses in the UK. Don't do that, sir. There is money owed, and it has to be paid. When all other attempts to settle a debt have failed, it's quite a lot of money. It's over five thousand pounds. Can you come to the door, please? Cases can end up at the high court. Nothing can conquer the writ. Where a judgment commands enforcement officers to recover what's owed. Our agents are the last chance saloon. Let's go. A high court writ. All checking desks are going to be closed until this matter is resolved. Gives agents the authority to enter unlocked homes and businesses. We've made contact. We know they're there. We're enforcing agents. Everybody leaves a trail. And to seize and sell property. Do you think we're doing something illegal? Call the police. They're trying to do everything they can apart from actually pay the bill. To finally get debts paid. They want us to get their money back. Fifty-six thousand pounds and seventy-six pence outstanding. In these difficult times. But I need to go on. Agents find ways for people to clear their debts. We're not ogres. We're nice people. Hopefully, it'll be a weight off your shoulders then. But every day, call the police now. They face aggression. You want to put me? Don't do this again. Hey. And abuse. Go my way. As they try to settle debts. Watch your back, Chris. This is seventy grand here. That no one else can. He thinks he can fight me. Yeah. Let's see. I know. Do you know what I do? that road go right around? This is actually the east, so we want to go right around to the to the west there. Agents Chris and Sam are on their way to one of the most famous stately homes in England to try and recover a debt of over £17,000. Have you ever done anything like No. Dealt with some very wealthy people. Nothing like this. Built in 1705, Lennon Palace is a residential property and a popular visitor attraction. Lovely building, very grand. That is beautiful. Yep. It's amazing. The money is owed by the 12th Duke of Marlborough for work done by a solicitor who's had to go to court to try and recover fees that haven't been paid. The bill has been outstanding for over a year. Hello. My name's Chris. I'm an uh, enforcement mm -hmm. agent um, issued with a high court writ. Obviously, we're going to talk to the Duke direct okay. about this. It's not often when we get um, told, I oh, will call his butler and uh, his butler will uh, know what's going on. Yeah. Chris and Sam have the authority to seize property to try and recover the debt. But as the writ is in the Duke's name, the agents can only take possession of assets that they reasonably believe are owned by him. So in relation to um, the Duke, obviously he's not here right now, um, but his apartment is just the other side of the buildings. Um, is there any other relatives or is the butler at the building? Um, oh, I'm just trying to find various people. Thank you. That might clear the debt. That's under the trust. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Um, do you know roughly how long it'll be? Uh, I'll just have a chat with her. Yeah, to lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Sam and Chris have information that the Duke has private apartments in one of the wings of the building. As they wait to be put in contact with him, they are shown a letter from lawyers for the Blenheim Palace Foundation charity about the Duke's ownership of property at the palace. It's a part that all the buildings that are coated therein are owned. So it's trying to say a blanket thing here that he doesn't have any personal items at this property. That's not entirely correct, because we do know he's got an apartment here which will have assets. What do you think? It's going to be a five minute job, my eyes, or a two, three hour job. Agents Mark and Virgil are looking to settle a debt owed by a pizza restaurant to one of its suppliers. It's from a company, a cheese provider. Obviously, you've got to have a cheese provider you've got to, if you've got a pizza place, don't you? The restaurant owes just over £4,000. It's a lot of cheese. Yeah, but I'm guessing it's, it's not just for a month. But Seeing that, there's a pizza place. If you do 100 pizzas a day, that's just going to be your monthly bill. The cheese supplier tried for months to get the money back before turning to the courts. 
It's nice. The claim can be anyone. Businesses, it can be people. It's someone who's made a bad decision, picked the wrong business to deal with, or engaged with the wrong person. It could be anyone. It could be you tomorrow. You're like a hair out of bloody traps. <laughs> Can we speak to somebody that's in charge of Ascot Pizza? Yeah, I'm gonna wait by. Oh, perfect. So basically, we have a high court rate. Yeah. I'm guessing it's for mozzarella bill or pizza bill or yeah. cheese bill. Yeah. Cheese. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. They went to court. They obtained a county court judgment, which then they escalated to the high court. Uh, currently, uh, the amount to pay is four thousand ninety-nine pounds and eighty-seven p. If it can be paid in the next 20 minutes, see? And after another 30 minutes, if it's not paid, we're gonna be removing items from this property. Okay, I'm gonna call the owner. That's perfect. I've just spoken to the owner. It's a weird PRG Ascot. Okay. We're not Ascot Pizza Project. And this is, it's not with us. It's with the old company. Although operating from the same building, the manager claimed the debt is owed by the previous occupiers. Yeah, yeah that's, the, the, yeah, that's company. Yeah, the old company. That's yeah. the last one. It's been dissolved. The most important thing when you're talking to somebody is body language because that gives you a better comprehension of what you're going to do next and how you're going to handle the conversation moving forward. Is there any chance you can call the, um, the owner? Yeah. Basically, I need the tenancy agreement and the business rates because that will show obviously who's here. Okay. If the company can't prove they're not the one named on the writ. Do you have any public indemnity or public liability insurance stamped on any wall? The agents will attempt to get payment today. Or a hygiene yeah. Yeah. thingy? Because you will have a name there, wouldn't it? You have like the hygiene post. Coming up. There's no Rolls Royces, Bentleys. No. Chris and Sam search for assets. If the payment isn't landed, I will then be looking at physically removing items. And Mark and Virgil. Virgil, yeah. Chase for payment. Oh my god. Mark and Virgil are waiting for a pizza restaurant to prove they do not owe over £4,000 to a supplier. They want a tenancy agreement, yeah, they yeah. want... Business rates. Business rates. Insurances, that's it. And insurance, that. I imagine our car also be downstairs, wouldn't it? They won't, they won't take invoices. To have an alcohol license, you've got to have your, your tenancy agreement on site, so it sh should be quite easy to get hold of. It is really hard because you're dealing with people, and when it comes to money and debt in these kind of times that we are living in, it's really, really hard. Uh, first of all, because a lot of people, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, have it really hard. But also because a lot of people have got into a habit of avoiding it until now. How long have you been here? Basically, um, the, how long has the, the company been To be been honest, here? I have no idea, because I wasn't here. No, no, generally, yeah. I have no idea, because I wasn't here when they opened. So I know it was okay. under previous ownership, and it changed hands sometimes, I think, the back end of last year or early this year. Right. They will have all the documentation, and they can always yeah. let you see what was what and when they started and so on and so forth. As long as we have documentation, we don't got a problem. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. He's saying that if we take an email address, and we'll send it all through to you. Okay. We need to really see it today, now. We need to see it now. I want to be able to find the alcohol license. It's an example. What about your alcohol license? License? Alcohol. Uh, should be on the door somewhere. Got it outside? Uh, I can't. 
It's usually inside. Okay, cool. Hopefully that's one. If you got alcohol. Oh, yeah, look at this. Come and check this. I just don't know what it is. Hold on, what's that? The obvious documentation. You've got to have the alcohol. It's got to be at hand. You've got to have the tenancy agreement as well. It's got to be on hand. But it's just not. As the manager searches. Oh! It's the old one. So you're telling me one, this one isn't valid then? Yeah. So it's not valid, so there's no point of showing it to me, is there, really? The only documentation provided is out of date. Definitely something here. We need the paperwork. You have a quicker option. If you know who does have it, get me on the phone and get him to pay it. Save us being a fawn in your side. While Virgil continues to hunt for paperwork upstairs, downstairs, Mark makes a discovery. Bingo. Virgil. Yeah. Oh my God. Mark, yeah, what's the final amount? Yeah. We're all downstairs, yeah. They left everything, wouldn't they? They left yeah. all their paperwork. They left, yeah, they literally left everything. To that indicate we need to see burden of proof of all the assets who they belong to. Despite finding all the invoices relating to the debt, the manager still claims the current restaurant is not connected to the one named on the writ. I'm going to warn off the office for removal. Yeah. Chris and Sam are looking for the personal possessions of the Duke of Marlborough. So I'm guessing this is the, like, the grand entrance for if he had a car drive him in. Who owes a bill of over £17,000 to a solicitor who hasn't been paid their fees. So this would be the front door. Oh, OK. Unable to make direct contact with the Duke, they've started trying to identify his property. So this is obviously his his space in there, so that's his private space, I'm guessing. No, no, it's open to public. Oh, okay. So the possessions all belong to the charity. Yep. A charitable trust controls a lot of the property at Blenheim Palace. So the agents need to work out which of the Duke's assets could be seized and sold to pay the debt. These are our business premises. And yeah. Uh, our lawyers are saying there is nothing here of the Duke's, and I know that is true. Yeah. So, is there yeah. a space that he um, has? Um, his PA is not around today. Yeah. He has a space somewhere there and it doesn't, it doesn't contain interesting things. Yeah. Okay. Can we get hold of her on the phone? Because she might have a, a way of directly speaking to him. We've, we've been calling yeah. his PA yeah. and the Duke. We must be able to get her, especially in an emergency. We, we've called one. I mean, we, we keep calling for days. What you said to me is obviously there's a, there's an office space that she has, um, which is obviously his his space that he obviously gives to her. Because it's a commercial space as such, um, and not a residential space as we were first thought, we can actually use a locksmith to gain access to that property. As we're High Court enforcement on commercial properties, we can use a locksmith to enter. To have that ability is a huge game changer for us because once we're inside, we're not saying, look, you need to pay your debt or else. We can actually show them that if it's, it's not getting paid right now, we are taking these items out. As Chris and Sam prepare to organise a locksmith, they get a call from a friend of the Duke who has been asked to intervene. At this stage, when we issued the High Court writ, we were instructed and commanded to take control of goods um, there and then to, to try and close off that debt. The friend says that the Duke does know the firm of solicitors that's owed the money, but believes there's been some kind of mistake about the debt. What we are going to do, though, is because I believe they're going to refuse to give us access, so it means after half past two, if the payment isn't landed, I will then be looking at physically removing items. Chris sets a deadline for the Duke to make a payment. But in the meantime, 
He wants to make sure there aren't more assets belonging to him on the grounds. Does it feel like you're making progress? I said, I won't trigger until 2.30. So we'll have a look around the, 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 the grounds. I'm not going to remove um, anything unless I see a vehicle which like a, no, something really obvious that's his car. But we will then look at some other items that potentially could be his. So it might be a bit of an art piece or something like that. And I, on paper, I'll be taking control of it. Um, well, I was going to say, we can have a look at where the cars... Call it where you want me to go? Yeah, where the, where the, the, the cars are. The chief executive of the palace charity shows the agents around the property. This genuinely was the Blenheim fire engine. It was donated back to us by the Oxford Fire Brigade. I certainly prefer the cases which are very open and closed cases. However, sometimes there's cases where you've got to really dig in, um, investigate, go through things. If someone opened that, you'd see a lot of retail stores and things like that guy. So there's no Rolls Royces, no. Bentleys. Oh, there you go, lights one. I can see inside, actually. Yeah. This is car park. There will be some estate vehicles here. That black van is an estate vehicle. The two delivery gun things are. So where so, would right. where would he park if he was working? Oh, uh, if he right. came to, to where, where we went to the door and said this is his front door. Yeah, yeah. On the on just at the bottom of the steps there, he'd have a Range Rover. Oh, really? Just stumped there. Okay, stumped. fair enough. With no obvious assets on site and the deadline approaching, let's give him another call. Chris calls the Duke's friend back. The man says that he believes the Duke is disputing the debt and doesn't know whether he will agree to pay it. Okay, it's just uh, I'm watching his time and it's hours since um, since we actually got here. With no progress, the agents may be forced to take further action. I always stick to my word, but two thirty would be the the mark where I will be making that phone call to take control of goods. Mark and Virgil have made a breakthrough looking for evidence linking a pizza restaurant to a writ for £4,000 owed to a cheese supplier. It can be Sanso Trading as Ascot Pizza. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with this. With this, I'm, I'm very happy. I've got no problem moving forward. The agents now believe they can remove property from the premises to help cover the debt. Look at that, £300 a time. I know. If each one of those is £300... You can see why. It's not even a year, is it? It's just a couple of months. So, yeah, I'm happy with this, mate. It doesn't really get better than this when it comes to proof. So in court, I'm more than happy, more than happy. The manager gets the owner back on the phone. He doesn't want to lose any of his stuff because we really need to keep. I understand. Um, so he's just going to pay it and then we'll fight it all out. Yeah, yeah, but my money's held for 14 days, yeah. Okay, I'll... cool, yeah. Let's go. The plan is when we turn up at a property is to get payment in full. That's what we do. Everyone in these scenarios, you always see the debtor's point of view, but you do not take in consideration the claimant's point of view, the amount of stress that he has taken on due to this money owed. We've got to represent the claimant to get the money. He's transferred it into my account so yeah. that I can transfer it to you, yeah. but it's not clearing. The amount is not... Like, it won't clear for me to transfer it on. Why didn't he transfer it? I think I... Because <laughs> that could take two, two hours. That could take two hours. So they said uh, they're going to pay, and I'm hoping it's now just a stall tactic. Look, we'll do this. So if it's 25 past one. We'll give another 15 minutes. If it's not paid, we will have to go to removal stage, which will increase the amount, and obviously we'll have to remove, which we don't want to do, OK? But I think this is fair. So she's got the money, she's just having issues. When you said 15 minutes, yeah. can you just give us a bit more time? The money's 100% there. Um, if she can't get it via transfer to you, I'm gonna take her, get the cash, I will give it to you. Because honestly, the money is there. I think, I think it's perfect. I think you can get it. Oh, it's got sorted, perfect. Are you cleared? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. 
Yep. Could we confirm a payment, please? Okay, pretty. Give me literally two seconds and I'll get back in touch with you. Thank you. Hi, so we've received 4,590. Thank you ever so much. We'll show you your receipt. An hour after they first arrived, the payment is safely in the bank. And this is why we do our job. It's cases like this that make it worthwhile. Very good result on this one. Very good result. We are good separate, but when we're together, we unstoppable. Awesome. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. Awesome. So, just pay your flipping cheese bill. Yes. The restaurant later complained that they shouldn't have had to pay the debt. But the cheese supplier got their money back. Coming up... The Duke is saying pissed off his dash. Chris and Sam dig their heels in. I always stick to my word. At Blenheim Palace. I will be making that phone call to take control of goods. Sherry and David... Please don't tell me what I can and what I can't do. ...deal with a debtor in denial. I'm not on you, Here. And Mark and Virgil. Sir, because you promised so many times and you oh. didn't deliver, yeah. it needs to be paid now, sir. Are in pursuit of twenty thousand pounds. Oh, so the payment got declined. With the cost of living rising, debt is becoming a greater problem for everyone. Hello there, can you come to the door, please? With the average total debt of a UK household nearly sixty-four thousand pounds. We've just got high corporate saying that we need to remove assets. But not everyone in debt is facing financial difficulty. Um, who's the boss? You the boss? Yeah, perfect. And the courts and the agents who enforce on their behalf... Has a bit of a sound. ...treat everyone equally. Unless we receive this money by payment today, then we'll be looking at seizing the Bentley, for example. Hello. Hi, Mark. It's Sue. Mark and Virgil are on their way to see someone they've dealt with before. We have a writ which was on a payment plan, which has now been defaulted on. Make an urgent attendance and let us know the outcome. Thank you very much. So, we've got a big one. He's a very civilised man. Is he? Yeah, very civilised, very, very smart guy. He is the director of a £4 billion pound company. The agents are making their second visit to a man who owes thousands of pounds for unpaid rent on a property. Uh, basically, the total was almost 40k. But after I went there, he made an arrangement. The first 10,000 was paid in October, and then the next 10,000 was paid in January. And he was promising to pay, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay, and he hasn't. The man owed the money has been trying to get it back for over seven months. This is humongous. And it goes down as well, my looks like. Yeah, yeah. The door is open. <laughs> Hello there, my name is Virgil, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. An unfamiliar face comes to the door. Where's the missus or the mister? Can you call them now so they can come here? If they don't get payment, the BMW on the driveway could potentially be seized by the agents to help settle the debt. Car's blocked in. Anything uh, in the garage? Yeah, that's it. Something. I'm going to have a look around the car. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello, um, my name is Virgil and I spoke to you last year. I came to this property. It's in regards to the debt. You remember? Now don't twenty thousand, all right? Sir, because you promised so many times and you yeah. didn't deliver. Yeah. It needs to be paid now, sir. If we've got the money, that's our job is to find out where it is and how can we extract out of them. What's that leverage? 
Once we find that, then we will start pressing on that pressure point. So you need to do a transfer. It's the same way as you've done last time. No, 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 no. No, I can't do transfer because it's from um, the US into your, your company account. So it has to be over the port. Are you able to take um, payments over the port? Yeah, I'm able. It's not a problem. Okay, um, I can do 10,000 right now using my card. Okay. So I can only, I can only authorize 10,000 today and I'll do another 10,000 tomorrow. Obviously, going through a person's house, you can clearly see whether, uh, you know, they're, they're rolling in money. And from our point of view, that's how we start the negotiation. We see, okay, do they have, don't they have? No. If you do 10,000 now from one card, you need to find another one, you're going to do another 10,000. It needs to be the full, uh, another 9,000. It needs to be the full amount. No. I, I can't, my limit is 10,000. I'm sorry, sir, but in seven months, you had more than enough time. Um, um, let me call the card over the phone, you charge 9000 and then I'll call my bank to increase it. Okay, let me call my office so they can take the debit card, alright? When people say, I can't pay this week, I'll pay next week, or I'll pay double the other week. It's one thing when, you know, it's genuine. Thank you for calling, how can I help you? Yeah, uh, I have the gentleman here on the phone, can you pass him the bank details? When it's not, you just have to make sure they pay the amount. Okay, um... Uh, on my card details, yeah. I need the expiry date too. Payment is done soon. So it has been, payment has been uh, approved? Yes, it's been done. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So the rest of it is 9,044 pounds and 73 pence. Okay, I'm charged charge the same card, the same amount. Okay. Hello, mate. It's me again. Um, can we do the rest of on the same car details, same everything? I'm going to pass it over. You can speak with my colleague. You are paying 9,044 pounds, 77 pence, right? Yes, please. Take it down. Thank you, sir. Just one second. Uh, so the payment got declined. It says declined by the bank. No, one second. Let me see. Okay. Patience is key in this game, especially with the larger debts. You give me, give me a minute to call, um, call my bank. I'll call you back. But I'm too battle hardened. We are there to the enforce. It's never the right time. Tomorrow never comes in this job. It's always today. If the man can't pay off the rest of the debt today, Virgil and Mark will look to settle the bill by seizing goods from the property. Chris and Sam are preparing to seize assets from the Duke of Marlborough. At 2 30 would be the, the the mark where I will be making that phone call. With the Duke's friend unable to help get a payment. I always stick to my word. The agents continue to talk with the chief executive of the Blenheim Palace charity. If there's a way that we can have a look at that uh, room, that I can't agree to that. Sadly, a lot of time is case of that person is someone who's trying to, uh, you know, avoid dealing with the matter. And that's when you normally start putting a bit of pressure on. With no easy access to the Duke's office, they may need to force entry to execute the writ. If we could get access to that, that'd be great. It's wicked for us to have a look and um, see if we establish everything. Agents can take control of property they reasonably believe belongs to the person named on the writ. Once it's seized, there's still time for any third party claims to ownership of the goods before anything is sold. I'm just trying to work out if there's any other way I can get permission to arrange payments. I don't think there is, but. Yeah. I could if the trustee agreed and the Duke agreed. Yeah. And, and I think the sticky point is the Duke is saying it's not his debt. Chris and Sam wait to see if the chief executive's attempts to organize a payment through the trustees is possible. To do this job, you need to have patience. Um, there are many jobs that you'll be sitting on and you could be on that job for a good few hours. It could be because they're trying to mislead you. It could be a case of it's that company's processes. So you've got to look at every case in its own merit. Was that um, any update? One step forward. Okay. If the Duke 
will accept that it is yeah. dead in writing to me, it's what we Yep. Then I have the trustee's authority to pay you. Okay. But okay. they're saying we can't authorize you to pay you if he doesn't give that, that authorization because it's, it's, it's not our money. Okay, that sounds fair. You've got to be stubborn. You know, there's a lot of people which will just um, try and wear you down. Um, so you have to stick in there, keep going through the motions, um, and then identify if they can pay or if you need to work with that person more. So one of the Duke's advisors is trying to persuade the Duke yeah. to either text or email me that he's happy. Okay. Hopefully we're going to have a success. And it's not long before they get his official response. Last time, please pay with my agreement. Oh my goodness. It'd be a bank transfer, but I can probably get you a, 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 a copy of the compensation. As long as it's paid, it clears his name and it clears up the case. I'll be walking back to your van and wish you well. <laughs> <laughs> lovely to meet you. No, know, it has been lovely meeting you. Excellent. Bless That's you. Hurry back. Yeah. Not for this reason. <laughs> no, not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All the best. Very different job, but Very still. different. But the thing is, you know, when he realised he needed to pay, he did pay. To start off with, he didn't think he was liable for the debt, but luckily his financial advisor, you know, advised him that if your name is on a writ, no matter who you are, you're going to need to pay it or see your assets go. Doing this job, you need a break. You That's do need a break yeah. from the job. Where, any we have, idea where you'd like to go? Caribbean or somewhere like that. Seychelles, Greece, yeah. Greece, Maldi, somewhere where middle of nowhere, no one can yeah. bother you. David and Sherry are on their way to recover a debt from a business that owes over fifteen hundred pounds in fees to an international money transfer company. This kind of debt is where our client has fulfilled the money transfer, but not is not being paid by the third party. We're going to proceed with issuing a writ of control and getting our agents um, to attend. Ready? Yeah. The shop is the registered address for the company that owes the debt. Hiya. Um, are you the manager or director of the shop? Manager. You the manager? No, no, I'm not manager. You're not my manager. Yeah. Is that him? At the top? The shop assistant puts the agents in contact with who they believe is the director of the company. Hello? Hello? Hey, what is um, me and my colleague, sorry, we're enforcement agents and we've got a high court writ for this address. What's the reason to be coming to the shop? It's for debt. High court the problem is I sell the business. You're telling me that you sold the business. I sold the business. We need to see the proof. Which proof? Right. When you sell stuff, you, you'll have a bill of sale or some sort of contract you're selling the business that's to. The, that's the problem. The guy that sold the, the business, OK, he's back to his country, Romania. So you ain't got no proof that you sold the business. The problem is I can do it, but I'm not in the home if I'm, because I'm out of the Birmingham. If I'm be home, I think I can give you some papers. That's the problem. I'm not sure I can prove it. I can't. You can send it by email. My mate, I'm not in the home. This is the paper in the home. David and Sherry need to establish if the shop is still part of the company that the director is saying he sold. If it is, they could seize stock to help pay the debt. I'm not on this Here. money at all. I'll pass on to my colleague. Hello, sir. Right. When did you sell in, it? In the January, I sell the January. January what? January 2021. Despite the man insisting that he sold his company, records show he's listed as the only director. Are you yeah. the director of the company? Yes. Okay. So we've established that. You are still the director, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, so you need to pay this. You've already had written notice of this. There's been... I swear to God, I've not seen nothing. Sherry. Sherry. Searching behind the counter, David finds opened letters addressed to the company 
that suggests it's still connected to the shop. I'm trying to explain to you because time is ticking. If you don't pay or get somebody to help you to pay this, we're either going to close the shop or we're going to remove goods to the value of that debt. You've got now about 15, 20 minutes, okay? But you can't move in these people's No, stuff. please, please don't tell me what I can and what I can't do. Mom, I'm here with the High Court Mom, writ. Okay, so I'm going to turn... No, look, I've said it look, to you clearly. Is... I'm going to terminate the call now. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you think somebody is pulling a fast one and they're playing the system and playing the game, it comes down to who's going to back down first. And you know you've done background checks. You can show them proof that they're still trading and they're saying, no, they don't. Um, it's more than frustrating. That's all we need. And the date is the 2nd of March, 22. If he sold the business in January, would they still be here? He's got a county court claim form. This is all proof that um, the company is still here and still trading as, isn't it? That just doesn't add up to me. That proves the business is still working for me. So now the owner needs to come up with the cash. Coming up. Let's try again. Mark and Virgil. This isn't a great situation. Close in on unpaid rent. Then we'll have to look at other avenues to get the money. And David and Sherry raise the stakes. So what is this? I can't, I can't. You don't need to swear at me. We could take this further. Mark and Virgil are trying to get a final payment of £9,000 from a man that owes the money for unpaid rent on a property. Okay, so give us a call back, okay? The person that's owed the money has been trying to get the debt paid for seven months. He's paid ten grand, still went for the nine grand. But the debtor has hit the payment limit on their card. But what we tend to forget, £19,000 is someone's yearly wage we're asking for in 30 minutes. Hello? Yeah, I'm on hold now with the bank, so you give me a moment. Yeah, no worries, sir. No worries, sir. Thank you very much for calling. Let me know. Mark and Virgil have the authority to seize assets that can be sold to recover the debt if they don't get the payment. This isn't a great situation. He isn't here, his wife isn't here, hence why we're here, hoping that'll be enough to gain payment. If it isn't, then we'll have to look at other avenues to get the money, which might be us entering the house. With the agents ready to take further action? Yes, sir. The man calls back. The bank says it should go through now, so um, okay, let's bear with me. Uh, let me try get, again. Let me get in touch with my colleague. One second, please. Hi there, my name is Virgil. I'm an enforcement agent. I spoke with you earlier. You took a payment for 10,000. He's going to pay the balance uh, 9,044 pounds and a few pence, I think. Yes, that, oh. that's the remaining balance. Okay, I'm going to pass you the gentleman. He's going to make another card payment for the rest of 9,000 something, all right? Yeah, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague. Here you are. Yeah, okay. Um, please take the details. All right. The amount I'm going to process is nine thousand forty-four pounds and seventy-seven pence. Yeah. Yes. Maybe it's not a big amount. Maybe it's a couple of thousand or a thousand pounds. The payment is successful. This has gone through. But when we go there, we go there on behalf of the claimant. We're going to send you a receipt uh, on your phone number. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to leave now. Bye bye. When it comes to us and our job, we need to do what the court commands us to do. That's it. Bad and dusted. For them, we are the last hope. They don't have to get their money back. You've got now about 15, 20 minutes. Otherwise, we're going to shut the shop down. David and Sherry are still trying to get their business debt settled with the clock ticking for the company director to pay the bill. 
You are still the director, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, so you need to pay this. The director says that he's sold the business that owes the debt, but he's the only director on records for the company. We need to get it sorted. People say this all the time. They say, I'm not this, I'm not that. But at the end of the day, we're here with the High Court writ. As the agents look at what stock in the shop they can seize to pay the debt. He apparently is a friend of the owner. That's what he's saying. A friend of the director comes into the store and says that he's been sent to find out what's going on. Yeah, look. Look, that claim number much is that claim number. It's dated a few weeks ago. And that's still coming in, that's been open in this address. The man says that the company director wants more time to deal with the problem. But as the debt has gone unpaid for months, Sherry wants a payment today. It's a serious situation. We're here with a writ from the High Court. He keeps saying he's away and he's got no proof and everything. But the situation is, if it's not paid, okay. we're going to take the stuff out of the shop, we're going to shut the shop down. The man calls the company director who wants to speak to the agents again. I did make you aware of this, you had 25 minutes to pay it, it's been well over that time. Okay, okay. Each stage of enforcement incurs additional fees, as set out by government. David and Sherry are at stage two which has increased the amount of money now owed. If I pay 1,500, you can leave it because it's... No, no, it's got to be 2,155 pounds. Then what is this? I can't, I can't, what's hey, this? you don't need to swear, sir, you don't need to swear at me. Right, what I'll say to you, look, we could take this further. We could take this further, we could shut your shot up. Which kind of the people you are? Why you don't understand, I say? I do understand, look, sir. The company director has failed to respond to a county court judgment and the claimant has been chasing the death for months. It's been over seven days since the notice of enforcement, which wasn't responded to, forcing the agents into taking action today. Right, let me explain. Do you want to pay 2,700 or do you want to pay 2,155? Of, of course I want to pay 2,100. But I suggest you get this paid. If not, in the next 25 minutes, we'll have to escalate it and look into get locksmith and maybe shut the shop up. With the debt mounting for the business, it's decision time for the director. Okay. Right. He's going to bring you the cash and give it to you. Okay. All right, then. Realising that any further delay could increase the bill, he agrees to pay and asks his friend to go and collect the money. Oh, he's back again. Uh, 2,100 and 55. Is that all there, is it? Sherry, if you want to count over up, there's two loads. Yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80. So you should have a thousand? Yeah. Yeah, you've got a thousand here. Yeah, I'll give you that. Oh, you're giving it to yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. You're responsible, you see. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good result. Yeah, good result because the guy, he was just saying, oh, I'll give me 24 hours. When I experienced it, we just could tell there was more to it. And it end, we were right to trust our adjustment on that. At the end of the day, we've got the money. Hopefully, the claimant will be happy about it. We're happy because we've done our job. We were fair, but we were very firm with them.